Well, it's time now for our health report, and joining us now is Africa 54 Health correspondent Lino Madu with news on the HPV virus. Lino. That's right, Vincent. The human papilloma virus is so common that the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention says nearly all sexually active men and women get it at some point in their lives unless they are protected by vaccination. The HPV virus can lead to cancer in both men and women. VOA's Carol Pearson has the details. Time you can fish is a good time. Fishing was Scott Ward's way of relaxing. He didn't have any risk factors that he knew of for cancer. So he ignored the lump on his neck until he couldn't ignore it anymore. We're seeing more and more younger, healthier patients. They're not smokers or drinkers, uh, obviously. And so it's just, it's HPV related. Smoking and drinking can cause oral cancers. Ward's cancer was caused by HPV, the human papillomavirus. Normally you think HPV, you think of women, cervical cancer. HPV does cause cervical cancer, but it's a misconception that only women have to be concerned with HPV-caused cancers. The big ones are the cervical cancer and the other ones the oral uh, pharyngeal cancer. Oropharyngeal cancers affect the head and neck. Yeah, Ward's cancer started in a tonsil. But there's a vaccine that's been around for more than a decade that can protect against the HPV virus. If all boys and girls received it, no one would get HPV-caused cancers. Was that painful? No. The HPV vaccine is best when given to children before they're sexually active. But teenagers and young adults can still benefit from the vaccine. Not everyone who gets the virus develops cancer, but it is a risk factor. Ward's recovery was difficult. He had surgery, radiation, and chemotherapy, but he's now cancer-free. It's a journey. I made it through. The vaccine didn't exist when Ward was a kid, but he says if he had kids, he would get them vaccinated. It's a prevention. Get it. The HPV virus also causes half a million cases of cervical cancer each year. These are cancers no one needs to get. Carol Pearson, VOA News. Now, vitiligo is a skin disorder characterized by patchy, the pigmentation of the skin. Up to 2% of people worldwide are affected by the skin condition, which affects men and women equally. Experts say more awareness and resources are needed to address vitiligo, especially in developing countries. Dr. Don Davis, president of the Society for Pediatric Dermatology, discusses skin disorder and some of the challenges and progress made in addressing vitiligo. Vitiligo is a common and very devastating disease. We're not sure the exact uh, pathogenesis of vitiligo, but we believe that it is an autoimmune destruction of, of the, by the body's own immune system of the melanocyte. So the melanocyte is the cell within the skin that makes pigment that then gets released to keratinocytes, which are the skin cells that make up the brick wall that is your skin layer. Mm -hmm. And various people have different types of melanocyte pigment that give them their natural skin tone. And we believe that the patient's immune system targets the melanocyte and destroys it. And when that pigment producing cell is no longer present in the skin, the skin over time bleaches because there's no pigment production going on. And that leads to a milky white appearance. That's devastating for patients of all skin colors, but is of course more obvious the darker your skin naturally is. Can a baby be born with vit uh, vitiligo or is it something that must develop over? It's something that's usually acquired. Acquired? Uh, yes. Could you elaborate? Yes, so when something is autoimmune, yeah. uh, it takes time to simply, for the immune system to turn on okay. and decide that it has an area of focus of which to focus on. Okay. So, so you can get vitiligo across the ages, and it happens mm -hmm. frequently in young children, mm -hmm. and also as we age in, in adulthood. And that's thought to be due to the fact that when you're a young child, your immune system is young and naive and learning, so it makes mistakes. Mm -hmm. And when you grow uh, older and wiser, your immune system uh, starts to retire and forget its ways. <laughs> so if it's acquired, is, is, is there not a way then to prevent it? Currently, we do not know of a way to prevent vitiligo. However, we do believe that once vitiligo starts, the faster you can get in to seek healthcare professional advice and start treatment, most likely the better your prognosis that we can hopefully stop 
the destructive process of the melanocytes and hopefully reverse it to allow your skin to repopulate and grow new melanocytes that can then start producing pigment. So it can be reversed. So for some patients, it can be reversed. And uh, is there a population that is more uh, prone to developing vitiligo? No, vitiligo happens across all uh, populations of people. Um, which is very interesting because most uh, diseases happen preferentially in one demographic versus another, but vitiligo is truly a very broadly impacting disease. Is there a genetic link to it? Some cases of vitiligo tend to run in families, just like autoimmune diseases tend to run in families, but they're not, it's not a directly inherited disease. Now, in terms of research, treatment, and prevention tool, uh, what do you see uh, the need? There's definitely a need to close that gap. Vitiligo happens very frequently on the face, the hands, the parts of the body that are visible, and it can be very devastating. Mm -hmm. And so psychosocially it's of concern and alters people's quality of life, but also from a medical standpoint, because if you don't have natural sun protection from the skin coloring that protects you from ultraviolet light, you're then at risk for increased photo damage and skin cancer in those areas that are vitiliginous. And so we have a medical and a cosmetic psychosocial reason to proactively research vitiligo and try to help patients find a cure. Okay. Our cure works on, our, our cure efforts work on decreasing inflammation and um, decreasing the attack against the melanocyte and also figuring out how we can teach the body to grow melanocytes once they've been destroyed. I would encourage patients as soon as they see a spot that starts to bleach on their skin that if they have concern that they could potentially have vitiligo, seek healthcare professional advice sooner rather than later. Time is of the essence. And that's our health report for today. To stay in touch, find me on Twitter at Lenormoudou. Vincent, back to you.